Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture on building blocks and core concepts for project appraisal. My name is Danielle Fopp and I'll be taking you through today's lecture on risk and uncertainty in project appraisal. So during a project appraisal or virtually under any decision making procedure, you'll be making decisions under conditions of at least some uncertainty. Now there may also be certain risks associated with this uncertainty and with making certain decisions in general. So what is decision making? Well, decision making is the process of making choices, gathering information and assessing the alternatives to find a solution. But there are conditions that you will face when making decisions and these are risk, certainty and uncertainty. So let's start with a few definitions from the Oxford Dictionary. Risk can be defined as a situation involving exposure to danger, harm or loss. And it's important to remember that each client will have different risk factors based on their perceived or the company's perceived danger, harm and loss items. Uncertainty. It's something that is not able to be relied on. It's not known or definite. Certainty. It's able to be firmly relied on to happen or to be the case. Feel free to come back to this slide if you need a refresher on these. So certainty versus uncertainty. The condition of certainty is an idealised situation where each condition that you are looking at and assessing is 100% certain. Concerns on the certainty and accuracy of estimates of say project life, predicted cash flows and opportunities are all relevant for a project appraisal. Even once a contractor has been awarded the contract, there will still not be 100% certainty in the costs and timelines as each contractor will have their own set of conditions in the contract, for example, extensions of time and variations to costs. There will always be a spectrum of certainty within your project, but you need to approach each project and each project appraisal knowing that nothing is 100% certain. There will never be 100% certainty in decision making in construction. So we have the scale from uncertain to certain. So making decisions under certainty means you either have the information or you are confident you can acquire more information and it has to be reliable and relatable information. Now you acquire this information and knowledge and you will reach a certain level of certainty along the spectrum. A condition of certainty exists when you know with reasonable certainty what the alternatives are, what the conditions are associated with each alternative and the potential outcomes. Now this would be the very far end of the certainty uncertainty spectrum which we can see on the right hand side. Under conditions of certainty you have access to accurate, measurable and reliable information. Such conditions exist in the case of say routine and repetitive decisions regarding the day-to-day -day operations of the business. In a project appraisal, it is likely you will be encountering multiple uncertainties. So let's dive into this a little more. On the other end of the spectrum, we have conditions of uncertainty. This is where the future and outcomes are unpredictable. Making decisions under pure uncertainty sounds like, geez, I don't know. You do not have the knowledge required to understand an event or you are ignorant about the likelihood that it may even occur. And that isn't ignorant in a bad way. It might just be that you have never encountered that before. You have no information. And this is why it's important in construction to ask for help when or if you are unsure as this will hopefully help to reduce the levels of uncertainty in how you approach a project. So what are some of the causes of uncertainty? Well, lack of information or knowledge, 
an abundance of information, conflicting pieces of information, measurement errors, subjective opinions derived from the subjective interpretation of the available pieces of information. And we know that small, simple projects or routine projects have low levels of uncertainty. However, as we move towards large complex projects in construction, there are high levels of uncertainty. So the low uncertainty projects might be your day-to-day -day building operations or a project that you continuously pump out across South Australia, for example. However, high uncertainty might be a brand new build or something that's not been done before. You're testing new concrete or new materials and that comes with a high level of uncertainty. Now we've seen this graph before and we know that uncertainty is greatest in the front end phase of the project and it diminishes as more and better information is, requ is acquired for decision making. So we know here as we start the project, we have high levels of uncertainty and as the project progresses, we have less and less uncertainty. And we also know that in this phase was when we were doing the project appraisal. So as we work through the pre-feasibility studies, the feasibility studies and the project appraisal, we get to a level of uncertainty that we are comfortable with or the client is comfortable with in order to proceed with the project. Now this graph also suggests that the potential to reduce uncertainty and risk is largest upfront and decreases substantially when the project is implemented. And we've discussed that previously, but it's worth revisiting. It's also worth noting that there are limits on how much an increase in information in the front end phase may reduce project uncertainty. So clearly, Uncertainty cannot be eliminated merely by just acquiring more information. It needs to be quality information because not all information will be available early on and not all information which is available early on will be of quality or of relevance. In other words, you must always live with a certain level of uncertainty in a project and we can see here that it never reaches zero. So we know that we're going to be making decisions across the life of the project. So not just in this course, but in any of your courses, we know we're going to be making decisions under uncertainty. It's unquantifiable and it can be applied to a situation where there are several possible outcomes, but there is little past experience to enable the probability of the outcomes to be predicted. So what are some of the tools that we can use to make these decisions easier for ourselves. The uncertainty first needs to be reflected in a project appraisal evaluation, particularly when it comes to financial evaluations. So you need to make sure that when you are estimating levels of certainty or uncertainty and risk, you are also writing that down and you are including it in your evaluations so the client can understand where the uncertainty comes from. You need to acquire as much relevant information as possible and approach the project from a logical perspective. You'll be using your judgment, intuition and professional experience to support the decision making process. So let's look at an example. In an environmental appraisal of a project, there are inherent complexities in estimating and calculating noise and air pollution values. The databases compiled by an environmental scientist may be incomplete or may be subject to change over time. And this uncertainty must be reflected in the decision making process. So risk. All construction projects carry some level of risk. Being able to identify and manage risk requires skill careful planning and being able to make good decisions quickly. When risks become reality, they can be detrimental to the successful completion of your project. 
However, properly managed risks can lead to higher profit, profit, stronger relationships with clients, and the ability to grow and expand your business. Risk can be quantifiable and be applied to a situation where there are several possible outcomes and, on the basis of past relevant experience, probabilities can be assigned to the various outcomes which could eventuate. The probability in each case indicates the degree of likelihood of the outcome. And these probabilities can be determined one of two ways. We have a classical probability theory or subjectively. You don't need to go into that in this course, but you need to be aware that it exists and that risk needs to be determined. Now, making decisions under risk sounds something like, I know the probability estimates. You have some knowledge and can assign subjective probabilities, for example, low, medium, high, regarding the event. And we will look more into risk later in the course. Now, in making decisions under risk, you have some knowledge regarding the likelihood of occurrence of each outcome. You then measure this likelihood of occurrence of an event with the probability. In making decisions under risk, you can predict the possibility of a future outcome. So what's an example of a project risk factor? Well, we have corporate factors such as, is the project a strategic fit? Do we have the expertise? Will it make the right impact on the market? We have project opportunity factors such as size, quality of customer, planning, and we have external factors, quality of information, demands of customers, and environmental. Now, if you're unsure if something is risk or uncertainty, feel free to come back to this table and use it as a refresher. We know that risk is the chance that an investment's actual outcome will differ from the expected outcome, while uncertainty is the lack of certainty or absence of certainty about an event. The main difference between risk and uncertainty is that risk is measurable, while uncertainty is not measurable or predictable. So let's revisit the certainty uncertainty spectrum. On the one hand, we have decision making under 100% certainty. On the other hand, we have decision making under 100% uncertainty. And both of these extremes are very unlikely in construction. But between these two extremes is decision making under risk. And the main concept here is that for any given situation, the degree of certainty and risk along with the spectrum varies depending on how much knowledge you have. In construction projects and during a project appraisal, we need to understand that there may be an information gap which will impact the probability of an adverse event occurring. Now we could talk all day on risk. However, all you need to do now is bring this knowledge along with your existing understanding of risk from your other subjects into this course. The analytical techniques you will learn in this course require the estimation of costs. And all of these techniques assume that the costs and benefits used have been estimated to the highest possible level of certainty. However, it is inevitable that with large construction projects, some uncertainty is associated with these estimates. Some errors may also exist in the formulation of the estimates. Furthermore, for certain parameters, such as the discount rate, which you will learn about in the coming weeks, there is no one true correct value which exists. Now in project appraisal, there's a concept called sensitivity analysis, and this assesses how responsive the project's net present value, which you will learn about, is to change in the variables used to calculate that NPV. This is because a project's NPV 
could depend on a range of uncertain variables, including selling price, sales volume, cost of capital, initial costs, material costs, ongoing operating estimates, and projected project benefits. The sensitivity analysis, therefore, provides an indication of why or where a project may fail. A review of critical variables is required to assess whether or not there is a strong possibility of events occurring which will lead to a negative NPV. For the purposes of this course, you will not be required to conduct sensitivity analysis, but you need to know it exists and you need to be aware of why it exists. So let's have a look at some of the strengths of a sensitivity analysis. Well, there's no complicated theory to understand. Information will be presented to management in a form which facilitates subjective judgments to decide the likelihood of the various possible outcomes considered. It identifies areas which are crucial to the success of the project, and if the project is chosen, those areas can be carefully monitored. And it indicates just how critical some of the forecasts are which are considered to be uncertain. However, along with those strengths, there are weaknesses. It assumes that changes to variables can be made independently. For example, uh, material prices in construction might go up, and this will be independent of any other variable. And this is very unlikely. If material prices went up, the construction firm would probably increase the selling price at the same time, and there would be little effect on the overall NPV. The sensitivity analysis only identifies how far a variable need to, needs to change. It does not look at the probability of such a change. Now, in the previous example, sales volume appears to be the most crucial variable. But if the construction firm was facing, say, volatile raw material markets, a 65% change in raw material prices would be far more likely than a 29% change in sales volume. It is not an optimization technique. It provides information on the basis of which decisions can be made. It does not point directly to the correct decision. And like I said, we will not be asking you to conduct sensitivity testing on your results in this course. However, you need to be aware of what it is.